Um, I, I did the grip strength test. I've done it twice now. And Meaning the, you did one of the like grip meters or you yeah. did a hanging test? The, uh, one of the grip grip meters. Okay. I actually did it at Brian Johnson's house, and then I, but I also did it with Andy Galpin. And people tell me it's a indicator of longevity, but I've never really understood why. Is it just testing my strength? Yeah, um, grip strength, of all the strength metrics, it's one of the most highly correlated with longevity. We actually prefer to do it like at 10 squared, where yeah. your colleagues tested yesterday. We prefer to do it on a dead hang. So we make them hang from a bar. Um, and we just time how long they can hang. So that that's a really good metric of your grip strength because it's also normalized to your weight. Okay. So uh, so we, we want to see that people can hang for at least two minutes on a bar. And so the question is, why is that so highly correlated with longevity? And it's what you said. It's, it's, it's strength. Uh, and the reason for it is it's really hard to be strong anywhere in the upper body if your grip is weak. Like, uh, if you think about being able to push, especially being able to pull, like all of the real metrics of upper body strength require a strong grip. And if you have a strong grip, hmm. you have a strong hand, you have a strong forearm, you have a strong scapula that is connected to your rib cage, like it goes up the whole chain. And that's another reason why we like the dead hang as a way to test it. Because the dead hang is testing everything. It's testing your actual grip. It's testing your scapular stabilization, the stability of your shoulder. It's basically testing that entire chain. And then I also think there's a practical side of this, right? When, when you know, it's very underappreciated what frailty does to an aging individual uh, and what sarcopenia, loss of muscle mass, does to an aging person and, and what it is about falling that is so devastating to an older person. And the stronger your grip, the easier you're able to navigate a lot of those things, right? It just seems unthinkable that falling is something I should be thinking about at 32 in the future. Like, because my it mobility- It seems ridiculous. It seems ridiculous, yeah. Yeah, and yet it is devastating. So once you reach the age of 65, which that ain't that far. I mean, mm -hmm. if you, you know 65 year olds all day long. That yeah. does, that's, not a, that's not a very old person. Yeah. Once you reach the age of 65, your mortality from a fall that results in a broken hip or femur is 15 to 30%. Just think, it is such a staggering number. So you're over 65, you fall, and that fall results in the break of a femur or hip. There's a 15 to 30% chance you'll be dead within a year. What kills me? It could be something very acute, like you bang, you know, the fall that's significant enough to do that also bangs your head. It could be that you get a fat embolism, you get a blood clot. It could be that, you know, during the recovery process of this, you just never really get better, you never thrive again. I think a more disturbing statistic is that of all the people who survive, 50% will never again regain the level of function they had before the injury. Wow. So they will require a cane for the rest of their life or something like that. Um, now, there are lots of things that account for that. Andy Galpin, who you mentioned a moment ago, talks a lot about this, but it's a lot of it comes down to foot explosiveness, power. So the reason you're not really afraid of falling, like when was the last time you were walking and you your, your foot caught something and you, you slipped? Like yesterday? Yeah, quite often. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Why don't you fall when that happens? Because I can quickly readjust. Right. That's power. Okay. So you have the power in your foot to readjust when you lose your step. You step off a curb not realizing it, it doesn't matter. You readjust. Oh okay. Those are a very, very specific muscle fiber that is responsible for that. It's called the type 2B muscle fiber. That is the first fiber that atrophies when you age. In fact, really? you're already at your peak. It's all downhill from where you are now. Thank you so much. Yes. So I'm, <laughs> I'm already 20 years past you, and my power is a fraction of what it was 20 years ago. Now, I fight like hell based on the exercises I do to try to make, to try to keep it as high as possible. So the reason that these, you know, people who are in their 70s are falling all the time is people think it's a balance thing. It's not just a balance thing, right? It's that they're undergoing the same insult you and I undergo on a daily basis, but the difference is their probability of being able to catch it, either through the explosiveness of their foot or their lower leg, coupled with maybe not being able to grab onto something as quickly and adjust, uh, it's a power deficit problem.